Hi everyone, I trust that you had a wonderful week and that you are not feeling cast down in lockdown, but that you are using this opportunity to increase, grow and develop in some areas of your lives. Well, today our reading is taken from the book of Luke chapter 17 verses 3 to 5. Let's read together. Be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times a day and returns to you seven times saying, I repent, forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. Now we know that the kingdom of God is ever increasing. Nothing is kept in the kingdom. We can grow from strength to strength, from glory to glory, from grace to grace, and from faith to faith. Faith is having an unshakable trust in God, believing Him implicitly. In the passage we just read, the disciples were not asking God for faith to perform wonderful miracles, but faith to enable them to obey a command to radically forgive someone who repeatedly wronged them multiple times in the same day. Possibly they still had the mindset of what the law stated under Moses which was an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, do to others what they do to you. But now Jesus was instructing them to do something that may have seemed illogical to them. They were being taught to respond as Christ would, to walk in his nature and in his likeness. No wonder they asked for God to increase their faith. Because if you try to do anything in your own strength and in your own human effort, it is extremely difficult. We can therefore say that faith and obedience are connected. In order for them to obey Jesus, they needed to increase their faith to allow the grace of God to kick in and to activate and to ignite. And therefore, the same grace would empower them to carry out God's commands. Now at salvation, each one of us were allotted a measure of faith. And that's found in Romans chapter 12, verse 3. This faith is in seed form, and we have to take responsibility to grow and develop our faith. One way to increase our faith is to obey fully and completely. To grow in faith requires our complete obedience and readiness to do His will, no matter what the cost. One such person who obeyed fully and completely was Caleb. We know that Caleb was one of the 12 spies who were sent to spy out Canaan. And Caleb and Joshua came back with a good report. They had faith believing that they were able to go in and conquer and possess Canaan. But 12, the 10 other spies had a negative report, so they were outvoted. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 24, God says, But my servant Caleb, because he has had a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land which he entered, and his descendants shall take possession of it. So here yeah, Caleb was promised Hebron for him and his descendants. In Joshua chapter 14 verse 14, it says, Therefore Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, until this day, because he followed the Lord God of Israel fully. Caleb had faith that dared to claim the fulfillment of an old promise. Remember in Joshua chapter 14 verse 12 he said, Now then, give me this hill country about which the Lord spoke about on that day. God told him many, many, many years before that Hebron is his inheritance. And Caleb obeyed God fully and wholeheartedly, never wavered, believed all the way, and at 85 years old possessed the land. The fact that the giants occupied Hebron did not discourage Caleb. It was enough for him that God had promised. His unwavering faith in God's promise led him to eventually possess Hebron at the age of 85 years old. Another example of one who obeyed God fully and wholeheartedly was Abraham. We know that God promised Abraham a son and he said that Abraham is going to be the father of many nations and that his seed will be more in number than the stars in the sky and than the sand on the seashore. And Isaac was born. In Genesis chapter 22 verse 2, God tests Abraham and says this. He said, Take now your son, your only son, 
whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. Abraham is well known for coupling his faith with complete obedience. That's why he accomplished divine purpose. When instructed by God to take his only son through whom the promise of multiplied seed would emanate, and to kill him and to offer him as a burnt offering, note Abraham's response. The word says, Abraham rose early, settled his donkey and took Isaac. No question was asked, no argument, no wrestling with God, no discussion with Sarah, no pity party, no extra prayer and fasting. Instead, there was instant obedience. Why? Because Abraham had faith to believe the promise that his seed would be blessed and that they would be more in number than the sand and than the stars. His faith grew daily because he coupled it with full and complete obedience to the instructions and commands of God. He believed that if he killed Isaac, God would raise him up again from the dead because he had faith in a faithful God who would keep his word always. We are Abraham's seed living today because of his faith and total obedience, not counting the cost at all. Now there was one in the Bible who did not obey God fully, and his name was Saul. In 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 3, God gave uh, Saul the instruction, Now go and strike Amalek, and utterly destroy all that he has, and do not spare him, but put to death both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. Listen to what Saul did. In verse 9 it says, but Saul and the people spared Agag, and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good, and was not willing to destroy them utterly, but everything despised and worthless, that they utterly destroyed. In verse 10, the word of the Lord said to Samuel, I regret that I have made Saul king, for he has turned back from following me and has not carried out my commands. So we see that Saul obeyed 90% 90, 90 of the Lord's instruction. He decided to keep the king alive and to take some of the choicest animals and valuable possessions after being commanded not to do that. If you read further on in 1 Samuel chapter 15, he blamed it on the people. He prioritized pleasing them than pleasing God Almighty. The opinion of the people mattered more to him than the regard of God. Saul was also self-righteous. He tried to justify his actions, although he knew internally that he was disobedient. What was the outcome? His kingship was stripped away from him and given to David. Family, we do not want our reign as sons of God in the earth and our dominion on the earth to be stripped away from us because of incomplete obedience. Let's choose to obey God fully. Don't be discouraged if obstacles appear in your path to delay you, like in Caleb's case, or if you find it too difficult to carry on, allow God's grace to assist you. Don't use rational thinking to try and figure it all out. Like Abraham, obey God's command and believe his word, which is sure and certain. Follow his directives. He releases grace to assist you when you are intent to do his will. And then see how your faith will increase and grow in leaps and in bounds. Amen. Shall we pray? Our loving and faithful Father, thank you for your mercies which are new every morning. Father, like the apostles asked you, increase our faith. Help us to obey your commandments fully never to turn back or slacken based on our, our rational thinking. Even when we do not see the manifestation of a particular promise, help us to see with the eyes of faith and to believe that you are faithful to perform your word. We pray for our president, Cyril Ramaphosa, and his cabinet. Grant them wisdom to guide us through this pandemic. This we ask in and through your mighty name. Amen. 
Well, may great grace and perfect peace be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen.